Good evening and welcome to the Tri-Cities Mountain Empire Weekly Digital Fusion Net. This is N4NT, name is Adam. I'll be the net control station for this evening's net. This net meets each Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the Bristol Amateur Radio Club Fusion Room, 61243. The Mirrors Room, 40843, will serve as a backup should the uh, Bristol Room be down at net time. Whenever possible, recordings of this net are <clears throat> uploaded to the Bristol Amateur Radio Club's YouTube page, and the net is also broadcast live on the Bristol Club's Facebook group page. The net has a website at qsl.net slash tcme for Tri-Cities Mountain Empire, and we also upload these recordings and the stats of each net uh, to this website. This net emanates from the Tri-Cities area consisting of counties in northeast Tennessee and the Mountain Empire area of southwest Virginia. All amateurs are welcome to check in. The purpose of this net is to promote good fellowship among amateur radio operators, encourage the use of the fusion digital mode, improve communication skills, allow contacts outside of the Tri-Cities and Mountain Empire area, and to share technical information and comments with the group. We will now begin taking check-ins. When checking in, please give your name, call, location, and let us know if you're going to be in and out or uh, if, you're going to, if you're going in for comments, just check in, but if you're going to be in and out, let us know about that. We'll now start, uh, start taking check-ins from any stations. Any stations, please call now. UE4AWJ, Emmett, Bristol. Net control, check in KD4 WMX on the 443 Cam Forks, Forex repeater. Name here is Ken. Okay, keep on that roll, check on them up. This is Kilo Foxtrot 4 Victor Quebec Alpha, EQA, Jeff. Monroe, Georgia, meeting Adam, and he'll be on the net. Uh, no traffic. This is WC4FM, Whiskey Charlie 4, Fox Mike, Leonard over here in between, Georgia. No traffic, and back to the net. Please check in, KD4CCO, Dallas, Bristol, and I'll be hanging around for comments. Okay, let me run through the list here real quick. We've got WE4AWJ, Emmett in Bristol, Virginia. KD4WMX, Ken in uh, Lodi, Virginia. Uh, KF4VQE, Jeff in Monroe, Georgia. Uh, got you checking in and out. And WC4FM, uh, Leonard in Georgia. Got you checked in and out. Thanks for, to both of you for checking in. Um, KD4CCO, Dallas in Bristol, Virginia. Are there any other stations? Please call now. in Scott Depot, West Virginia. Time valued uh, in and out this evening, uh, Adam. Thank you. Okay, we got N4XRD, uh, Ralph in Chihuahua, Virginia, and I saw uh, ABARL Tom is 
Scott Depot, West Virginia. I saw your, your call pop up. You made a double with Ralph, but I've got you on the list there. Um, any other stations? Okay, well, let's run the list here real quick. Um, tonight's question, um, I decided I would wait till I've got some check-ins and then present the question. Uh, tonight's question was is a, is a pretty simple one, but uh, should prove for an interesting topic. What was your first rig? Um, HF, 2 meters, 70 centimeter, what have you. How did you like it and do you still use it? And that question was submitted by Robert K4HPY. So what I'll do is I'll kick it off. Um, I actually will answer that in two parts. I may have to uh, express this to another quarter in. Um, my very first rig, um, I got licensed in 1992. And a lot of you may uh, remember this. It was the Realistic, which was made by Radio Shack, uh, HTX202. The one I had was the, the it's Realistic before they went to just calling it a Radio Shack HTX202. Strictly two meter radio, and I. Well, I was 15 years old and would get in from school and walk around my neighborhood and I took that thing everywhere I went with me. If, uh, if I took off with my family and went to Walmart or something like that, I'd be in the store with that thing strapped to my side and I kept the, uh, 146-64 repeater in Marion hot. I think Dallas could probably attest to that when he checks in later. Uh, but that was, that was mine. Uh, I still have it, but it doesn't work anymore. It, uh, it won't, uh, transmit. Uh, it may be fixable, and I, I may look into into trying to do that just to just to have it. Uh, I thought I was going to answer that question in two parts. So let me put another quarter in. Uh, about seven years after I got my ticket, I upgraded and uh, to Tech Plus, uh, and got my first taste of. Uh, HF and my first rig was a 10 tech Omni D and I at that time that was around 1999 or so uh, 10 meters was actually pretty hot and I I kept between 28.3 and 28.5 every evening I'd get in from work and spend an hour or two on the radio just making contacts like like you wouldn't believe all over the world and uh, the reason I brought that up I actually I, I had sold that radio a long time ago and I have acquired another one as a backup radio and have been using it since my 991's in the shop and been checking in with some rag cheap groups and it's been kind of nice having the having the old rig sitting on the desk and uh, been enjoying that. So that's my answer to the question, uh, which is once again, what was your first rig and uh, how did you like it and do you still use it? So we'll now turn that question over to Emmett, WE4AW. Good evening, and any other comments you'd like to make? Well, good evening, Adam, and everybody on the net, and everybody listening. So let's see. The very, very first rig was a 10-meter rig. I can't tell you what the name was. It's long gone. Um, the other 10-meter rig was made by Radio Shack, and it was stolen. So it's long gone. Uh, first, uh, two meter rig is Malenko HT. I still have it. And the antenna is fell apart and it's turned white. So that tells you how old it is. And that's pretty much that with that. But, uh, I guess that furry first 10 meter rig is what got me and sold. Anyway, uh, it's cold here and it's been snowing for two days, even though it didn't stick on the ground. And it's getting colder tonight. So everybody stay warm and stay dry. And uh, we'll turn it back to net control. This is WE4AWG. Okay, well, thank you, Emmett. And thanks for checking in. And, uh, and appreciate that information. That uh, You mentioned those Radio Shack 10 meter rigs. I, I didn't have one, but it brings back some memories of some folks that did. And, uh, you know, back on there was more activity on 10 meters. Boy, those were uh, neat little gadgets to have. All right, that brings us up next to uh, Ken, KD4 of WMX. Ken, tell us about your first rig and anything else you'd like to comment on tonight. 
Well, good evening, Adam. Appreciate you picking up the net. This is eighty four WMX. And my first rig was a handheld of the dual band, a Linko. It was a five eighty J. Um I still have it. Don't use it. Uh because I've got so many other dual band radios and uh HF Reef, that sort of thing, so uh, it is still sitting over here on the uh, counter over here, and it still works. I just don't use it. But uh, I'm like everybody else, it's, it's cold. It's about 18 degrees here in quiet Lodi, and that's cold. Let me put another quarter in this thing. But I uh, hope everybody's staying warm, and uh, look forward to the next during the week and of course the, that's on Tuesday nights we have one on Wednesday night and Saturday night for uh, analog and sky warm on the 443 at 9 o'clock and uh, so I'll say 73 to everybody and turn it back in that control and for MT this is 84 WMX clear Okay, Ken, thanks for checking in, and, uh, yeah, that brings back some memories, too, uh, mentioning the, the Linkos. I uh, had one once upon a time. It was, it was probably my first mobile rig that I actually had, but uh, there was a, a fellow up there in late spring, uh, Jim Snap, that uh, I think he swore by those things, and uh, he highly recommended them. Uh, well, all right, good to hear, and uh, the next two stations we have are in and out, but, uh, you know, a few fellows... Uh, change your mind and uh, want to want to jump in on the comment session we'll just uh, let us know when we go to take check-ins again that you, you're always welcome to call an audible there if you'd like <laughs> all right i'm interested to hear this one in particular kd4 cco tell us about your first rig and anything else you'd like to tonight good 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 evening adam and everybody over there well uh, if I started talking about my first radio, well, there's only one first radio, so uh, I'll tell you about it. I, I took my test and passed, but I think it was about six weeks before I got uh, a notification back from the FCC as to what my call sign was. So in the meantime, his kit was running a special on their two-meter handheld radio which was built by standard, by the way, in case you don't, don't know. It wasn't a true heat kit. It was built by a standard, which I don't don't know if they were still in business or not. And it was an HW2M, which was a state-of-the-art radio at that time. That was back in the early, I think it was about 1990, somewhere around there. And the radio still works. Unfortunately, the audio output is weak on it, so you have to have to use a uh, speaker, a control speaker, or a headphone or something of that nature. The speaker that's in it is just too too weak to to hear. So anyway, that's about it. From I, oh, I had a bunch of scanners and a bunch of. When you said you had an HW202, I've got one of those that still works. I use it for uh, APRS when I'm when I'm moving on the camera. So, anyway, I guess I've got to talk to Peter now, so I better get off. This is KD4CCO, back to net control. Okay, Dallas, thanks for checking in. Yeah, if I would have been uh, taking bets with somebody on what your first radio was, I would have lost, because I would have put my money between the HTX202 or that Yaesu, uh, uh, what was it, the FT470, I believe it was, that... Uh, that came out for some odd reason. I had, I, and I know a lot of people around that time when the no code license and all that, when, when we were all first licensed, a lot of people had those. And maybe that's why I was thinking that. But uh, it's good to hear you still got one of the 202s in service because I always heard it was a good packet radio. And uh, 
I never got to use it for that, but I, I was I was certain if you had one, you would have uh, you would have done that or APRS with it. So that's that's good to hear. All right, up next we have from Chill Highway, Virginia, N4 XRD. Ralph, tell us uh, about your first radio and anything else you'd like to comment on. N4 NT in the net, N4 XRD. Well, I'm going to talk about my first real radio. I had various uh, receivers over the years, but as I was studying for my ticket there a few years ago, I was able to buy a FT450D from an estate along with a little power supply. So while I was studying for my ticket, I left the microphone off and had that rig sitting on an old wooden TV dinner table upstairs in the bedroom. For an antenna, I had a piece of wire kind of crimped over and just uh, stuck in the back of the, the antenna connector there. Had it going to the top of the window to my side there I had it wrapped around a pencil so it would be stuck in the window. And I had that wire going out from about 18 feet high out to a tree that I had climbed about 140 feet away. And I just simply had that wire wrapped around that tree. And that was a pretty good receiving antenna, believe it or not. So anyway, I finally got my ticket there after a while. And... Uh, made my first contact on 40 meters with uh, South Cars. Uh, Daniel, uh, KB8 OTM, I think is his call sign. He's a, he's a pretty regular guy there. My second contact was with somebody activating parks on the air. My third contact was with uh, a Canadian ham, so I was on a roll there. It was a good day. Used that radio for a year, and now I've switched over to a FT991A, but still use my little FT450 and plan on keeping it. Even after it croaks, I'll still keep it. And for XRD, back to net. Well, good deal, Ralph. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I know uh, a lot of us out there uh, probably did some listening before we got on the air, and that's uh, that's kind of what got me started. I, I thought of can't remember what model it was. It might have been a unit in. I can't remember a scanner that uh, had a local repeater in it that uh, I started listening. That's what kind of sparked my interest. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And I, I like uh, Canadian bacon as well, especially on my pizza from Papa John's. But that's a different story right there. <laughs> All right. I believe we had, uh, like I said, I saw the call sign pop up that there may have been a double. But uh, AB8RL, Tom, are you, uh, are you out there? If so, tell us about your first rig and... Uh, Anything else you'd like to comment on? Uh, N4 NT in the net, AP8 RL. Good evening, Adam. Oh, I thought it'd be short term, but uh, didn't get a call I was expecting. But anyway, glad to answer the question. I got licensed back in 1968, so my first radio as a novice was a Night Kit T60. It was a crystal controlled, uh, I think it was about a 50 watt uh, input transmitter, put out about 25 or 30. Um, I bought it at a ham fest for $20, and I was just thrilled to death to think that even the thoughts that I had a transmitter. The receiver, my first receiver, was a uh, Heathkit HR10. They're still sold uh, on QTH once in a while. My dad built it as a kid. Uh, let me let it break. Uh, shortly thereafter that year, uh, my dad and I went to the Warren Ham Fest up in Warren, Ohio, and he won the first prize at, uh, at that ham fest. And it was a Drake R4A. Back in those days, valued at about $400. And that was like getting a Cadillac receiver back in those days. So uh, the, uh, the HR10 uh, went, and then the uh, Drake R4A came in, and it was a great radio for, uh, for, for myself to use, even with crystal control radios, as the transmitter. But today, neither exists. Uh, but uh, that's how I started out in, uh, in, in 1968 there. Great net. Glad to check in there. Yeah. N4NT in the net, AB8RL. Okay, Tom, thanks for, uh, for checking in. And, uh, yeah, just uh, a reminder to the folks listening in with us. Um, you know, we try to connect the uh, 14667 repeater, the node, to West Virginia Link on Thursday nights. Uh, Tom and his group has a 
has a net, and I actually borrowed the idea of having a uh, net question uh, from those those guys. And uh, who knows, maybe one of these nights or one of these days, I'll jot some of these down, and we'll, we'll duplicate some along the line. <laughs> That'd be okay though, because a lot of good information comes out of it. If it's worth uh, worth worth having, we'll, we we definitely uh, we can have it on both nets from time to time. But uh, thanks for checking in, Tom. That uh, that brings us to the bottom of the list. And before I start taking another round of check-ins, before I forget, uh, if you'd like to submit a question for the net, uh, just hit us up on the, on Facebook um, through the either the uh, uh, Bristol Club's Facebook page or the Mountain Empire page. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll get them to us to me if they uh, if you put them over there, or you can go on the uh, net web page qsl.net slash tcme and the link to my email address is there at the bottom um, and you can email me a question and I'll gladly uh, include it because uh, it's a lot of pressure coming up with 52 questions in a year so I got 50, 40, 49 more weeks to fill up before the year starts over again so I'm, I definitely welcome those alright with that being said that brings us to the bottom of the check in list we'll open it back up if there are any other stations that would like to check in please call now Okay, uh, four VQ8. Uh, still here uh, for comments. Okay, uh, Jeff KF four VQ8. We'll go ahead and let's let's go ahead and go back to you there. You were you were on the list earlier, so uh, since you've been waiting a little while, we'll go ahead and. Uh, Throw it your way for uh, comments. Tell us about your first rig or anything else you'd like to tell us about. Okay, uh, thanks, Adam, and uh, hello to everybody else on the net. And uh, in my first rig, let's see, I bought a Kenwood two meter, a single band. I think it was a TM two eighty one. I bought it in December of ninety seven. But I didn't, and I listened on it, but um, I didn't get my ticket until January of '98, and uh, so that was my first rig, uh, mobile, and uh, I really enjoyed it. But then um, I picked up a uh, dual band HT a Kenwood. Can't remember the model number, but um, my first HF rig was uh, the old. Um, I think one of the other guys here had has one too, the Radio Shack 10 meter uh, radio. And like you said, Adam, back in 98, 99, 2000, uh, boy, 10 meters was uh, booming. <laughs> and uh, a while back, I was looking at my log book, and uh, I had a whole bunch of uh, contacts back then on 10 meters. But uh, anyways, that's uh, that was what I had. My first was that Kenwood single band, uh, two meter mobile. So thanks for letting me jump back in with comments. And uh, everybody stay warm. It's going to go down to uh, 24 down here in the hot slant area, so we're not so hot slant right now, but anyways, thanks again, Adam. Uh, great job, man. Uh, uh, so 73 all around. I'll be on the side. KF4 VQA. Uh, back to you, Adam. Okay, Jeff, thanks for uh, checking in with us again tonight, and uh, and the information there. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, that was my first impression of 10 meters, and I thought that was how it was going to be. <laughs> I'd love to see those days come back again. Boy, that would, uh, that would be nice. Now it seems like just being able to talk halfway across the United States is, constitutes an opening. <laughs> All right, uh, are there any other stations that would like to check in? Please call now. KD4 CCO, reject. Yeah, go ahead, Dallas, in 4 NT. Well, the radio I told you was my first one. And I guess it, it, it really was my first one that I could trap that on with an A kit. But, uh, I think my first real amateur radio, it was just a receiver. 
was a uh, Heath Kit HR sixteen eighty, and it uh, it was it had a companion transmitter, CW transmitter, and it may have been five band too. I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been quite a while since I bought the radio, but I bought it. It, it was of course it was a kit, and I put it together, and and I I really wanted a shortwave receiver. But uh, the shortwave receiver was quite a bit more expensive than the, the strictly the ham radio, so I went and compromised and bought the ham radio, strung up an antenna in the backyard, and uh, I used it for quite a few years before I finally broke down and got my license. So I guess technically that was my first rig. Back to net control. This is KD4, CCO. Okay, that was you know, thanks for the uh, the information and that uh, yeah, that sort of reminds me too. Uh, I know a lot of us uh, out there probably got our uh, got our start or whatever uh, with the CB radios back in the day. So I figure I'll I'll throw in my uh, my first CB radio was a Midland. Uh, I don't even remember what model it was, but the microphone on it um, was like a, hand, a handset on a telephone. You could hold it up to you and you could put it to where the Sound only came through that uh, handset speaker, and the push to talk button was right in the center of it. And you could push and talk. It was a 23 channel radio, and then eventually I upgraded to a 40 channel uh, radio with a Cobra 142 and had sideband and all that. So that I, I thought I was uh, that was really the the thing to have when uh, when I got that. I, I was uh, uh, driving a Cadillac, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if we uh, we have any more uh, check-ins out there. This is the N4NT with the Tri Cities Mountain Empire Fusion Net. Uh, anyone else like to check in? Please call now. Net control. Please check in. Whiskey Two Victor Zulu Eric in St Albans, West Virginia. No traffic. Okay, Eric, got you on the list, uh, list. excuse me, W2VZ, um, got you in and out there from uh, St. Albans, West Virginia. Thanks for checking in with us. Um, I've got a few different nodes connected here I haven't heard from them yet. Uh, are there uh, any other stations out there that would like to check in, please call now. Okay, well, just uh, another reminder about the web page, uh, qsl.net slash tcme for Tri-Cities Mountain Empire. Uh, again, there's an email link on there. If you have any questions that uh, you'd like to see us put forth as the question of the night, please uh, please do so. We certainly welcome that. I've had uh, had a couple submissions, and I've used, uh, used them both. Um, and we certainly uh, welcome any, any additional that we can get to help, uh, help fill out throughout the year. And uh, also, I'm looking to put together some type of information page on, or on the uh, web page. Um, two different things. The first thing I've got in the information, I'm going to put it out there. A fellow named, and I don't, I can't remember his call. His name's Jose Rivera. Made a nice little list of uh, wires, X nets that uh, that are out there, and uh, I've uploaded a copy of that to the Bristol Amateur Radio Club Facebook page. I'm also going to feature that on the. Uh, uh, Tri-City Mountain Empire Fusion Net page. So uh, that's not on there just yet, but uh, that will be in the near future. I'll, I'll add that to the web page. Uh, and I'm also looking to add some information to let folks know. And like for instance, if you don't have uh, a Wires X room or a HRI 200 or a, 
a full-time note connected to your local repeater, uh, explaining to people how if they have an FTM 400 or 100 or, or one of the PDM radios, they can just tune to their uh, their local repeater frequency and put it in PDM mode and uh, and connect to our room and actually feature the net on their repeater. Um, you know, as long as they have the okay of the the head old people in charge of the repeater type thing, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I want to put together some information like that. So if anybody out there has something that's already put together and simple, I can just link to it. That'd be great. If not, we'll, we'll throw something together. All right, with that being said, let's put out uh, one more call for check-ins before we close the net. Is there anyone else that would like to check in? Please call now. Okay, just a reminder, mirrors uh, Mountain Empire Radio Society net tomorrow night at 9 o'clock on 440.000. And also um, at 9 o'clock tomorrow night at the Yard Dogs net, uh, we connect the 6-7 uh, repeater to that net. So if you're local and want to go through the repeater or uh, if, uh, if you're uh, in another locality and want to go through Wires X, uh, 40383 is the Yard Dog room number. So, uh, be sure and uh, connect for that and uh, check in with them. And for the local folks, if you want to check in the both nets, it's usually not not too difficult to do. You can check in with the mirrors group, and that net usually ends in time that you uh, you can still make it over onto the yard dogs net and, uh, and hear the program that they have going. So it's uh, they, uh, it, it's doable to check in the both. All right. Uh, does any, uh, anyone have anything else for the net before we close? Okay, well, we had a total number of uh, nine check-ins tonight, and we had uh, four states represented, and uh, just uh, the one country with the uh, USA represented. Thanks to each one for taking time to check in. This is N4NT, closing the Tri-Cities Mountain Empire Fusion Net at 10.03 p.m., 7.03 and good night.